everybody, welcome back to In The Huddle. I'm Jillian Kushner. Today's Tuesday, but we're going to talk about something a little different. We're going to talk about three big sports figures who passed away this year. I know that topic's a little morbid, but I just want to talk about what made these people so special to sports and why they were such monumental figures. So if you'd like to see who those three people are, then keep watching before you go. Please subscribe below and like the Facebook page in the description box, and let's get started. So the first person I want to talk about is Arnold Palmer. He passed away in September of this year, and he, I mean, I don't even know where to start with Arnold Palmer. I'm sure you guys know the drink, but he's more than just the drink. He's not just, you know, tea and lemonade. He was a huge golfer. He was a huge figure in the golf community. Arnold Palmer really kind of put golf on the map. Like people started caring about golf because of Arnold Palmer. You know, of course, Tiger Woods got people more involved late like later on way later on but Arnold Palmer really like set the scene that he put golf on the map and he was an incredible golfer he's probably the best golfer of all time or arguably so he has seven major championships you know he's won so many championships in his career it's unbelievable an incredible golfer just there's no other way to describe him he was just monumental for the sport obviously one of the most successful athletes of all time with all of his championships, all of his tours, everything that he did. He won so many tournaments, which is unbelievable. Y'all have watched a golf tournament that is not easy to win. And he did it with grace, and he was incredible. An incredible golfer, and it was a huge blow to the sports community when he passed away. Just a really big figure who just, like I said, set the scene. Uh, really, all of these people are just monumental figures, and he was one of them for the golf, for sports in general. He was incredible, and he just... He's the reason really we watch golf nowadays. Like golf wasn't a big deal until Arnold Palmer came around. The second person, ooh, this one was hard to swallow. Muhammad Ali. Ooh. We lost Muhammad Ali this past summer and you know this was something that was like coming for a while. I, obviously he was a boxer so he took a huge beating. He developed Parkinson's really because of all the concussions he had and brain trauma he had in his boxing career. But he just was like a shell of himself his last few years. He was so just not there mentally, and he's a very smart person, very smart. So Muhammad Ali, greatest boxer ever, greatest boxer ever. I don't want to hear any other, like, no one else, there's no one else. Like, people can try to argue someone else, but they they fail, because Muhammad Ali was the, is the greatest boxer of all time. Incredible. It's like, I don't even know where you began, so Muhammad Ali was this amazing boxer, but he was also a activist. He was born Cassius Clay, changed his name to Muhammad Ali when he joined the Nation of Islam. And he was an activist because he refused to enter the military, which was required at that time when he was um, younger in his boxing days. And he got all of his championships stripped away because of it. You know, he was arrested. He was really hated by, not American public, but, but the American government really hated him. And he still did it anyway. He spoke out about all these racial issues. He was a huge figure in like civil rights issues. He was incredible. Obviously, they the medals they stripped from him, they eventually gave back. And he's, I mean, greatest boxer of all time. He had an Olympic medal. He's incredible. Muhammad Ali is just one of those person people that you just. He's known for his great quotes. I'm sure you guys have heard "float like a butterfly, sting like a bee." That's Muhammad Ali right there just an incredible person, incredible boxer, it's just, so the last person, ooh, this is the, this actually might be the toughest one, this happened last week, it was that recent, it's Craig Sager, Craig Sager's not an athlete, he's not the best boxer of all time, he's not one of those, he's a reporter, he is a courtside reporter for the NBA, and he is the best to ever do that, he is an amazing journalist, an amazing reporter, amazing, just person, ugh, oh. This one hurts. He lost a very long battle with, battle with cancer. Very long battle. He was diagnosed in 2014. He had a bone marrow transplant that his son gave him, actually. And he was better. And then he relapsed in this past March. And they gave him three to six months to live. He lived eight. And he was, oh my gosh, he was incredible. He didn't give up. That's the thing that really stood out about Craig Sager is his will and his strength and just everything about him. He's so has so much personality. He was known for his outfits. He was always wearing some ridiculous outfit. He never repeated it, but he loved his suits. He loved his shoes. He always wanted to be himself and never wanted to just dress like everybody else. He wanted to 
let his personality show and that's just what stood out so much about him. When he relapsed and was diagnosed with cancer again, he was going he was undergoing chemotherapy and what was so incredible is he actually got to cover his first NBA finals this past year, which was crazy that he's never been at an NBA finals before. But during those NBA Finals games, he was still getting treatment for his chemotherapy. During the playoffs, like let's say when he was covering a San Antonio game, he would be in Houston getting his chemo and he'd drive to San Antonio and cover the game. Go back, stuff like that. Like he was incredible. Like he loved his job so much, he was like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get chemo, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna cover this game, I'm gonna go get chemo. You know, he was just like that. And it's incredible like people couldn't believe that he was there on the court an interview that really stuck out to me last season was he was interviewing steph curry and steph curry hadn't had any rest the entire season he hadn't rested over the all-star break nothing like that so craig sager was saying like aren't you tired like aren't you exhausted and steph curry turned and he's like we see you out here and we have no reason to complain like we have no reason to complain. Craig Sager would never brag about himself, so he's not like, oh, stop it. He just kept on asking him questions. He never let himself get any shine, and people kept on complimenting him and saying how incredible he was, and he just kept on interviewing, and he just didn't stop. And it was a really, really hard loss to see with Craig Sager. He won an award at the ESPYs, the Jimmy V Award, and gave an incredible speech, and just amazing. And his personality, everything he brought to the NBA, and games as a whole just impacted everyone. Every NBA team, players, they're all impacted by this. Even the NFL players are impacted by him. They've never met him. He was a fantastic reporter, did a great job, and as a journalist, he's something, someone I've always looked up to, and his just fight just showed everybody how, like, it, there's a bigger picture, something bigger than the game. There's more to this than just basketball, just football. You know, he was out there battling cancer and still covering the games because he just loved it so much, and it was, it was incredible to see him out there, and it was very sad that we lost him. But. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you on Thursday talk about some big games this weekend. We got bowl games, we got NFL, we got all of that. So I'll see you then.